Hi everybody, it's Super Mary. I'm coming today to talk about how I got diagnosed and also about my medication journey. So when I first got diagnosed, um, I was in sixth grade and I don't know if it was like a formal diagnosis, but you know, they did some testing on me in school cause my grades were slipping. I was always talking out of turn. And so they called my parents in uh, in, when I was in sixth grade and said, Hey, we think that Mary has ADHD and we'd like to give her Ritalin. So I guess it was a formal diagnosis considering they were going to give me medication for it. But my parents, uh, did not believe in medication for psychological ailments. They were Scientologists at the time. And so they said, heck no and they took me out of school and home taught me instead because they said you're just not challenging mary enough and there you go so then i got married and about a year later so i think this is in 2004 i started getting therapy and this was for my ptsd because of some childhood trauma we didn't have insurance at the time so this couple that we knew actually did their tithes where um you know, it would be split between three ways. One way would go to the church, one way would go towards like their continuing education, and then another of the third would go towards um, helping people, like donating to causes and things like that. So what they actually decided to do was donate their that portion of their tithes towards me so that I could see a therapist. This therapist said, you know, yes, you have ADHD. Yes, you have PTSD, but I'm not sure if that was a formal diagnosis either. Um, but after a while, you know, I stopped seeing that therapist, um, money kind of ran out. Um, and after that, I, I kind of thought I was fine. But then looking back now, I know that like I have had suffered for years at that point. So then around 2000, 10, 2011, I decided that my ADHD was getting too bad and I was getting absolutely nothing done that I wanted to get done. Uh, and so I went through the process of trying to get formally diagnosed with at least ADHD. So then I had to go through a referral chain. So I went to my general doctor and then my general doctor referred me to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist referred me to a therapist. And the therapist eventually gave me the PTSD diagnosis, but I was just there for the ADHD at the time. So I went to the psychiatrist and like I said, I was going for ADHD. So uh, one of the things that he did was, um, if, if you know a bunch about ADHD, one of the things that we have issues with is working memory. Um, and working memory is kind of like if somebody is talking to me or I'm doing something and then I get distracted, working memory is that thing that makes you be able to go back to your task that you were doing before. And I, I don't, I don't have that as well. Um, <laughs> I forget what we were talking about. I forgot what I was doing, all that good stuff. So what he did was he was talking to me. He asked me some question. I don't even know what it was, but he reached over and in the middle of me talking, he just banged loudly on the wall and it caught my attention. And he goes, Oh, never mind that. Go on. What were you saying? And I had no idea what, where I was or what I was talking about. So I, I'm pretty sure that unless for some reason the walls of the hospital ha um, had uh, rats in them and he was trying to, or he was trying to shake loose something from the air ducts, I think he was trying to judge my working memory. So he prescribed Adderall for me and Adderall actually made me go a little hypomanic. Um, which is a lesser form of mania. And we'll talk about mania a little bit later. You'll find out why. The next thing that happened was a few months later, I went back to my psychiatrist and I was like, holy crud, I am still depressed. I didn't know that it wasn't, I, I for some reason I thought that like the way I was feeling was gonna go away. 
um, as soon as I had my ADHD under control and was able to do things or activate. And so he decided to put me onto a drug called Celexa, which is an SSRI, which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Yeah, that's right. And I can talk a little bit more about what that is and what different um, antidepressants do. If you're interested in that, leave me a comment down below and I will make a video about that. And so what happened when I took the Celexa, I started getting what's known as brain zaps. And it's like tinglies in your brain. And I love them. I was like, yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> it's so gross to think about, but it's really cool. And I think it was the first or second night. Um, I actually did not sleep. I didn't sleep for a couple of days. And I, I went manic. I didn't know what mania was at the time, but that's that's what had happened. I was on the floor with like my laptop and a pad of paper and I was researching and writing a paper on some sort of psychopharmacology and I remember thinking oh my gosh I'm like a female Sherlock Holmes and I thought that for sure I was going to finish this paper and I was going to submit it to SDSU and UCSD and they were going to give me an honorary scholarship. So the next morning, uh, Trevor woke up and I remember telling him some of this stuff and I remember being like, oh my gosh, I don't know what it is about the Selexa, but Every since I've started taking it, like everything that's coming out of my mouth is just pure gold. It's just, it's just, it's just genius. And my husband was like, no, you just have been talking a lot. Hold on, I'm gonna turn my light on. Turn my little light on. I don't know if it's gonna make a difference or not. Let me know in the comments which, uh, which lighting works better, I guess. I don't know. So I thought maybe something was wrong at this point. So I actually, looked up my symptoms online, like talking a lot. I don't remember if racing thoughts was one of the things that I put in there, but like not sleeping and stuff like that. And yeah, it, it came back and it said, you know, I was manic. So I went back to my psychiatrist and I said, Hey, I think I may have gone manic on this pill. And he essentially was like, Oh yes. That means you're not depressed. You have bipolar disorder. So he took this Alexa away from me and he gave me a mood stabilizer. And mood stabilizers are there so that you don't go manic or I don't know if it's for the depression too, but I know it's so that you don't go manic. So before I found the right dose of uh, medications and the right mix of medications, I actually started self-diagnosing, even though I had the diagnoses of ADHD, bipolar, and PTSD already, I was still trying to self-diagnose. So like, I remember coming in because I would have uh, sensory issues. So that's where, you know, uh, vibrations would bother me. Uh, certain sounds would bother me so much. Like I had misophonia. If someone was eating with their mouth open next to me, I just could not take it. Things brushing up against my skin, tags and clothes, things like that. And I always had those issues, but I was like, oh, I'm autistic. I would sometimes stim too, which is like, rocking or like, you know, fiddling with something, something so that like it would, it would give me stimulation. And I think that was part of the hyperactivity though in my ADHD, but still. And then for some reason I got it in my head that I had borderline personality disorder. And I think it was just because, you know, one of the symptoms of borderline is that you feel empty sometimes. Well, that you feel empty all the time, I guess. And I felt like that sometimes. So I was like, I have borderline. I don't remember what else. I, I know that I had come up with other things too. I told my therapist and my psychiatrist this and they were both like, no, no, stop. 
so that's how I got my diagnosis. A little bit more about the medications now. Um, I did get some side effects um, from the mood stabilizers. Uh, a couple of them made me a little deadpan and not, uh, not very alert and I didn't feel like myself, so I stopped taking those. And then one actually gave me like a little rash and they said, if you have a rash with this certain pill, don't, you know, stop taking it. And I forgot all of the things that I had taken, like Lamictal and I don't know what else. It was something that started with a T. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And then because I was still having um, depressive symptoms, even though I was taking a mood stabilizer. The mood stabilizer was, was were making me so that I wouldn't go manic, but I was still dipping high into depression, low in depression. So some of the effect side effects that I got from antidepressants were like, um, one of them actually gave me blurred vision. And I actually don't know if my vision has ever been the same since I started taking that particular medication. I, I don't take it anymore, but I I know I've always had an astigmatism in my eyes, but it may it may have gotten worse because I remember like getting double vision while I was watching like Iron Man 3 or something like that or you know an Avengers movie and I was seeing the credits doubled and blurry and i was like <laughs> do i need glasses and then weight gain is another one that i got as well as um some reduced sex drive uh, but i'm glad that i kept going i went through a whole heck of a lot of medications and despite having so many side effects and like i, I to be honest my level of side effects is nowhere near what some people um deal with so I consider myself very lucky in that, but I, I'm, I am really glad that I kept going and this is only my experience. Some people find things right off the bat, like, uh, for example, the Adderall that I take, um, I found that right off the bat. That was the first medication they gave me. They didn't ramp me up or anything like that. That was just the first thing and it worked really well. Um, and once I got onto, um, you know, a mood stabilizer, I stopped going hypomanic with the Adderall. So uh, I am right now, I'm on Abilify, which is technically an antipsychotic. Um, they give people with schizophrenia uh, Abilify. They also give people who need extra help for um, antidepressants Abilify. And then they also give it to people with bipolar one. And I will explain the difference between bipolar one and two and not otherwise specified probably in a later video. If you're interested, drop me a comment. So with the Abilify, um, the reason why I'm taking it as an antipsychotic, and it's kind of a mood stabilizer as well, is that I do see things. I hear, you know, people calling my name or different things like that. Um, I have seen, you know, like animals, like sm like small animals, like flitting around corners or around table legs, things like that. Uh, one time I saw a dead person in a car behind me as I looked in my rear view mirror. And then another time I saw a giant two story tall dog. And I was like, well, that's not real. So I'm on Abilify. And then I am also on Wellbutrin. And Wellbutrin is an antidepressant and a non-stimulant ADHD medication. And then of course I'm on Adderall as well. So the Adderall gives me dry mouth um, and I have to drink a lot during the day to kind of stave off because I, I feel dry a lot. And then the Abilify caused um, weight gain, which I'm now trying to combat. But now realize that this is only my experience. Every single person's brain is completely different and there's no way of knowing like what is going to work for whom. So me saying what I'm on and the good experiences that I have on these medications right now, not 
at all an endorsement. Please do not take my experiences with these medications as any sort of endorsement whatsoever. I do not know if they will, they will work with you. As a matter of fact, your psychiatrist may not even know if it's going to work for you, um, you know, in, in, in the whole scheme of things, just like any other medication for any anything else, you can get different side effects. It can affect you differently than other people. There's just no way of telling until you get into it and you actually try it. So it's all trial and error. And I, if you need help, I strongly encourage you to go after it. Um, advocate for yourself. If you're having symptoms, you know, uh, on a side effect, on a pill that you don't like, bring that up, bring that up in session, let them know. Um, these are things that help them determine what other things to try. Um, and never feel bad that a pill isn't working for you. Uh, just keep trying. So yeah. And I've been seeing a therapist and a psychiatrist ever since, and it's been great. So that's my experience. My advice, would be just to talk to somebody. Um, if you have a general doctor that you see and that you trust, talk to them, you know, um, see if they can give you a referral out to either a psychiatrist or a therapist um, to get you diagnosed. And if you do have a diagnosis, that's when your insurance starts kicking in and is able to pay for things. Sometimes if you don't have a formal diagnosis, your insurance won't pay for uh, therapy or psychiatry. So get that diagnosis. There's also other resources that you can use to find therapists. I will put them in the description below. One of these places I do believe is calling 211 or going to 211.com.org.gov. I'll put the link in the doobly-doo. Honestly, just reach out to somebody. Yeah, so that was my tale. If you liked this, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If it helped you, leave me a comment down below. Um, if you wanna tell me what prescriptions you're taking and what your, uh, what your experience was like that with doing that or, uh, or getting diagnosed. Again, leave me a comment down below and hit the subscribe button and the bell. And until next time, you keep being awesome. Mwah!